Oh, hi, friends. Hey, the next patient we have here is Max Austria. They provide outdoor sports in Austria, of course. And the symptoms are the contact forms that are being used are looking like 1998. They want some more functionalities and the contact forms are just not converting. So my prescription for this website is very easy, it's a four step medicine. The first step is we will install the free Caldera form plugin. Uh, the second one, we're gonna create a simple form with just uh, notifications and everything mailing out to the visitors and the website owner. Very easy, normal, standard contact form. The third step is we're gonna create a advanced form with some conditional logic and fun stuff. And the fourth step is a multi-step form with conditional logic. They can also upload their stuff to the website. Everything is in this last crazy and final form. All right, if you just follow the steps, we will be creating forms in no time and you will be up and running in just 30 minutes. Let's go. Log into your WordPress dashboard. If you're still using WP Admin to log in, that's not a very safe way. So please watch this video about WordPress security, the circle of five. You go to plugins, add new. Then on the right top corner, you type in Caldera Forms and press enter. We press the button install now and we press activate. Now you don't want to click on these buttons right here because you will go to another website. So we click on the left side on Caldera Forms. We go to forms. We can close all these banners and in the top we press on new form. Now you don't want all these pre-made forms, we press on the blank form. Type in a name, simple contact form and press create form. Now this is the Caldera Forms Builder. Here are your rows and you can split the row right here so you get two columns. Now, two columns, we want that. We drag and drop this add field and we release it above the left column or the right column, whatever you want, so you can just use the left column. And here we see all the fields that are available in Caldera Forms. We have the basic fields, the select fields, file, content, e-commerce fields and special fields. A lot of fields to choose on. So let's start with a basic field and let's use the single line text. Press on set field. And now you see on the right side all the options for this field. Here you can change the field to all the fields we just saw, but just let's just use a single line of text. First, we're gonna give it a name. That is what people will see on the front end of your form. So fill in name and we can make the name required. So they have to fill it in and the description we could use. We would like to know your, who you are. And as you see on the left side, you can see that it's a description below the input field. Now, I think it's a bit too much because of course your name, so I just removed this for this website. We want to show it in the entry list. And when you show it, you can see it later on. And here you can fill in a placeholder. Now, placeholder is what you can see in the text field. And it's helpful for some people to know what they should fill it out. You can see on the left side, my name is a doctor is right there. Well, we don't need it for this field, so we're just going to delete it. All right, everything else is okay. So we can just add another field. Drag and drop this to the right column. And we're gonna add a email address. The name, email address. Let's make it a bit more personal. So let's do your name and your email address. I like it a bit more that way. And we're gonna make this field also required and we wanna show it in the entry list. We're gonna add another field. Let's make it a phone number field because we wanna know more of our clients. Let's use the better phone number field because they can select their country in that. With a basic field you can select it, but this one is very nice. So let's create the name, your phone number and it is a required field. That will not help in conversion rate. If you do not require a phone number, please leave it off. If you do need it because you're gonna call all your clients that fill in the form, just press required. Let's not make it required for this form. 
All right, press use country code because that's very useful if you have visitors from all over the world. Let's press save form. Let's add another field right here. And we're going to make a drop down select. Press set field and we're gonna name it. What language do you prefer? Because we have international clients and we wanna know if we should answer them in German, Dutch or English. Let's add an option right here. Press add option. The first one is English. We're gonna add another option which is called German. We're gonna add another option which is called Dutch. You can click here to make it default. So now you can see in the form that this option is selected by default. It's very useful. Sometimes you will need it, sometimes you won't. All right, all right. Now we want another column. I want a full white row. All right, we're gonna drag and drop this field and we're going to create a paragraph text area. The name is your question. And we should require this field because we do want people to not leave this empty. And the last field would be a button because we need people to enable to submit the form. So we enter the name submit and you can do send or anything you would like in this field. Sometimes I use show me the money or send me the quote or yes contact me. Just whatever you like. Press save form. All right, let's go to the email settings, to the notifications, because we want to send out this form. So let's select the from name and we're gonna make this something we can recognize in our email box at a first glance. So let's create contact form on website. The email address should be your email address from your domain. Let's make it info at that is okay. And reply to email address, this field. Because when you forget to reply to the email, put in the summary, then this will really help you if you press just a reply button without thinking. Email type should be HTML. If you have problems with delivery, you can always select text. That will really increase your delivery. But HTML would be good if your website has been configured properly to send email. All right, these are the email recipients. Well, we want to send it to our own email address, info at maxaustria.com. And the email subject should be something we could really recognize. So let's make it new prospect on your new prospect on your website. The summary, that is the email that we will see. Let's make it a bit more nicer to open those prospect emails. Go to the official editor and press hi there. Someone just filled out your contact form. Congratulations. Go get them, tiger. Well, we don't want to debug mailer unless you have problems with delivery. Your mail doesn't get delivered in your mailbox. You can turn this on. And let's now press save form. And we go to the next option, which is processors. We're gonna add a processor. A processor is a autoresponder, for example, and a redirection that is very useful. So let's create the autoresponder from for the person that's filling out this form. So we're gonna use the from name. We're gonna make this Max Austria because that's the name of our business. From email info at maxaustria.com. Reply to info at. We don't want to send a carbon copy and we don't want to send a blind carbon copy. The email subject should be thank you for contacting us. The name of the recipient, that would be the name on the field. And the email should be the field email address. And the message would be hi recipient name. Thank you for your email. We will get back to you as soon as possible. So all these percentage percentage tags will be filled in automatically. Let's make this a bit more nice. Thank you for your email. We will read it with great interest and get back to you as soon as possible. Have a great day. Greetings. Team Max Austria. 
Alright, that looks like a good autoresponder that someone gets when they fill out the form. So we press save form. Alright, let's add another processor because we want to redirect people to go to a URL when they enter the form. We want to show them a nice thank you page. We want to send them to slash contact slash thank you. And because that is our thank you page. Press save form. We have the conditions tab, we will be using that later on on the next created form. We have the revisions, so you can always go back to another saved version of your form, very handy. And we have variables, we won't be even using that right now. And the responsive tab, it should be like this size, it's very good. If you see a problem with your form on mobile devices, you can change it right here. Alright, here are the settings of the form, here you can change the form name, let's make this English because it's an English form. You can also see the short code of your form so you can place it anywhere on your page. Scroll to the top on submit, we want to disable this one because we have a thank you page installed as our processor. The success message should be not form has been successfully submitted, no, the success message should be you will be redirected dot 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 so people know there will be a thank you page because you always see this success message just very short we want to capture entries of course hide form after successful submission yes you should enable that one because people will get confused the honeypot this is very useful for a anti-spam they create a field which you can't see but the spam bots see and they will enter something in that field and if Caldera form sees something being entered then they will just not send the mail to you because it's likely spam. And let's use this shortcode on our website. So copy the shortcode, press save form and we're gonna place it on a page. Go to the page that you want to add this form to. We're gonna add it to the contact form. And we're gonna place it right here. So in Elementor you can use the short code module. We drop it, drag and drop it to there and we're gonna add our short code for the Codilla forms. And, and you see immediately there's a form but the layout isn't right. But that will be all right on the front end. And let's see if it works on the front end. Oh yes, it's beautiful, it works, so let's enter it. W press doctor is our name and our email address is the at wpressdoctor.com. Our phone number, this is a great field because you will see our number is too long and now it's our good number. And you can also select your country, so if your target audience is international, this is a great field. As you can see, now it says in Dutch, our number is too short. It says in Dutch because this is a Dutch translated page. I have to place this form on the English page. We'll be doing that later on. Do you guys also rent equipment for my stay in Austria? I really don't have anything but a simple sled. Thank you in advance. Greetings from the doctor. Now we press send and we'll see what happens. Redirecting. Yes, the thank you page. All right, it works really great. We have received your message and we'll get back to you soon. So if you want to send this email also to someone else, you can use another autoresponder and put in a recipient email. For example, like sales at maxaustria.com. Congratulations, you've just created a simple form. Now, are you ready for the next level? We're gonna create a advanced form with some more conditional logic. Follow my lead. Right, so let's create our advanced form. For that we're gonna clone this simple contact form we just created. Press this button clone and we're gonna name the form advanced form. And we press create form. So let's add some conditional logic right here. Let's change this to additional questions. And let's change this to three rows, make it a bit smaller. We're gonna add a new row right here. And we're gonna you drag and drop this on top of the additional questions field. 
Now this is all good, we're gonna leave this. Let's drag and drop another field to there and we're gonna add a single line of text. We're gonna call this single line of text organization name because we wanna know if they have an organization. Let's make it two rows. Mm, let's place it right there. You can just drag it and place it anywhere you would like the field to be. Let's add another field to this place and we're gonna use a drop down select or a checkbox. Let's use a checkbox. Let's call this checkbox sports. And we're gonna add a option right here. And the first option is snowboarding. The other option is skiing. And the other option is torchlight hike. This is so awesome. Another option is tobogganing, way mountain biking, and canoeing, canoeing, rafting. Rafting is awesome. And the last one, climbing, rappelling, or cable sliding. All right. Oh, we have another one, paragliding. They have such cool things there in Austria. Oh, another one. The last one is culture trip. All right. Well, that's the culture trip is actually on the sport. So we're going to name this one different. We're going to call it activities activities let's change this slug also to activities so we can go around there okay we have all the activities now let's add some other conditional logic right on the right side of the activities field we're gonna add a drop down select and name of this field would be do you want to rent equipment question mark and the so let's add options to our drop down it's the same as the checkboxes yes and the second option is no pretty easy the default option is yes all right we press save the form so but i only want to show this field if we're talking about snowboarding or skiing or tobogganing or well we can change it all let's go to conditions and add a new condition. Let's call the new condition activities and press new condition again. All right, so on the condition tabs, we press add rule. If activity is snowboarding, we want to show. And if activity is skiing and, oh, this is the wrong one. Add another rule and if activity is mountain biking and if activity is a torchlight hike and also if the activity is climbing then we would like to show the field do you want to rent equipment right that's it so we press save form now let's add another conditional logic field I'm gonna place it below this one and it's gonna be a single line of text the name is with how many people are you coming question mark how big is your group question mark we want to place that on front of course let's add another field right there let's make it a single line of text and call it do you need a teacher question mark Let's test this out on the front end and let's see how it looks. All right, this all works. And when I press snowboarding or skiing, our conditional logic drop down works like a charm. This is great. As you can see, it works with only the fields that we selected. That's awesome. All right, so let's add another field to this spot. We're gonna make it a single line text. And the question is how many participants question mark let's place it down, down right there and how big is your group that's not a very good one let's change it to how many supervisors question mark are there it's a better line how many supervisors are there how many participants are there 
Let's add another row and let's add another field. We will be using this later. We want a section break because I don't like the layout of this field. It is too much and the and I would like to have this one. So let's move this entire row to this place above that one. And you can easily clone this one to place it also down there. So we just drag and drop it to there. And now we have two line breaks that will create a more spacing form. We have copied, so we have to enter a slug. And if it's the same slug, it won't work. So let's call it HR. Because it's a section break. And we press save form. And if you now refresh on the front end. Okay, so the line break doesn't do what I want right now. So we're going to change this one to a HTML. And now we type in HR are because it is the same tag that is used. We are going to style it a bit with this style. You can find it in the comments and as you can see as we save the form right now then you will see when I refresh this form you will see that this line is going to be a bit nicer and more beautiful. I want it to be the same color as this so this is the same color nice orange so we are going to paste it right there and then we're gonna save the form. And when we refresh right now, look at this beautiful, beautiful breaks in this form. Awesome. All right, this looks way better than before. The conditional logic still works. So this is great. So let's add another field right there and we're going to add a drop down select. We're gonna call it, do you need a bus for transport? Question mark. And let's add a few options. Yes and no. And we're going to conditions. And we're going to add a new condition for the conditional logic. And we're going to call it bus. And this condition will have, let's see, we need to show do you need a bus for transport? We're going to add a rule. If activities is snowboarding, we press on preview form. And now you see when we press snow warning, another one comes. Do you need a bus for transport? All right, this is great. So, and when people use a bus, we're gonna add another conditional logic field. A checkbox. Well, yes, let's make it a checkbox. And the name is... How sick do you get on a bus? Question mark. The first option is... N not at all. The second option is only when the bus driver is from Italy. And the third option is so the third option is only when I cannot sit in front and can't look out of the window and someone is wearing a, is someone is sweating or wearing a heavy perfume. We're going to do conditions. We're going to add a condition. Bus 2. If do you need a bus is yes. How sick will you be? It's going to be there. All right. So when you now click on snowboarding, you will get immediately those three options. Well, as you can see, how you sick, how sick do you get on a bus is standard on. Now I don't like that. I only wanted to show when do you need a bus for transport is yes. So that is because in our form we have this field. Do you need a bus for transport is default on yes. If I change it to no default and I save this form and let's preview the form right here. Now as you can see when I press snowboarding then do you need a bus for transport is empty. You see? But now when I add yes, here comes the conditional logic again. Here it is. So that works awesome and this is just the way I would like it to work. In this way you can create conditional logic and now you know how this works. Even when conditional fields are also conditional.
Hey, good work! So now you know how conditional logic works. It still needs some practice, I understand, but with this video you've made just the first steps in the world of conditional logic. Well done. Alright, are you ready for the funniest and most advanced form we can create? Follow my lead and I will take you by the hand to create something really special. So for our crazy form, let's clone our advanced form and let's give it a name, crazy form and press create form. So what are we gonna do? We have this conditional logic that worked really good. Let's add another field right there. Let's make a hidden field. Now with this hidden field, you can do an awful lot of things. And the most interesting is you can use it to show the current URL when where people enter this contact form. As you can see, there are a lot of values that you can use right there, but most likely you will use a current URL and maybe the current date. It's also very useful if you want to have a user ID when someone is logged in. You can use their f first name and last name or their email etc. It's very useful. Here are the dates so let's also use this date. Alright the name of this field is date and URL. So we can see when in the backend that this field is populated by those two values. This field is hidden so no one will see it except you and me. And we can change this field on top because I want to see it when it's emailed to me I want to see this thing first. Let's add another field right there and we're gonna ask a URL for someone to enter the form and the question is what is your Facebook address? Just for checking you out. Alright so this field can only be populated by a URL and this one is required. So the funny thing is about this field, you can't enter anything else. Let's add another field below that one. Let's use a date picker because we want to know when people come. What date do you want to come? Question mark. Let's make this one show in the entry list. Our formats, years, month, days. Well, in our part of the world, we use days, month, years that looks way better the start view should be default the start date we only want people to book seven days in front you could use the start date and the end date if you have only can only use this form in a period of time so as you can see right now when you preview this form you will see that the date picker is not showing right now because it didn't save it. Now when you now preview the form you can see what date you come and you see the date picker. As you can see now the date has only been limited to these uh, 8 days. So that's not the way how I like to see it for this website. So we're going to remove the end date on this field. Delete this one. And also the start date. Mm, let's remove it also. Let's save this form and let's preview form. And as you can see right now, the date picker works really great. Here you go. Now you can choose any date in the future. That's awesome. All right, let's add another field. Let's create a autocomplete. The name of this field will be, how would you rate your snow sport experience? Question mark. And now we're gonna add a few options. We have labels, not so good. I'm terrible at it. Next option, I broke both legs last time. And the last option, I'm average. We have another option, I am a expert. And another option, I can ski and just sip on a cocktail while going down the black beast. All right, we have no default option, so we're going to save this. And now you can see what happens with this autocomplete field. The autocomplete field can be used very handy if you're looking for states or something like that. You can press it down and now you can even type it. Let's type in cocktail. And as you can see, the only option come down is the cocktail option. So this works really awesome. This is very handy if you want to have a list or for something that people know like street names or big towns or areas in your city and then they can just type it in and it will appear right there. 
Let's add another field. We're going to add a toggle switch. And the toggle switch will be, do you like cold? The option is no. And the option is yes. I love it when it's freezing my fingers off. The funny thing is with this, you actually get a switch on the front end. Let's preview the form right here. As you can see, you can just spool the switch. The second option is a bit long, but you see the difference. Now, this will be fun if we are using conditional logic. Let's add another field below that one. And let's add some HTML. And the HTML text is no problem at all. We have the right gear or the right equipment. No problem at all. We have the right equipment for your stay right here for only $4,000 per day if you sign up today. Well, that's a nice one. All right, let's copy this one and change another HTML field to great. Then you are at the right place. All right, we're gonna save this form and it's gonna give an error because we don't have the right slug right up there. So let's just copy this name and place it in the slug field and change it to number five. Let's save this form. Let's go to conditions and add the conditional logic. We're gonna call this condition do you like cold question mark eh, press new condition and i'm gonna make a rule if do you like cold is no then we show html field number 94 yeah well we didn't change the name so that is totally not recognizable we can change that at layout and the two fields we're talking about are this one let's change it to no problem HTML field and let's do this one and change it to great HTML field. Let's save it, go back to conditions. And now you can recognize them easy. That's way better. All right. Do you like gold? Show if is no, then we show no problem. And we're going to add a new condition. Do you like gold? answer is yes and we're gonna add a rule if do you like calls is yes i love it then we're gonna show the great html field all right we're gonna save this one and now you can see when we press preview form that the toggle button now works for this html field that's pretty nice you can use this in all kinds of ways this toggle field and let's add different pages because the form is a little bit too big right now. So press this add page button and you can see we have page 1 and page 2. Now you can't move the entire section to the new page. That is something they could really work on or I am missing it right now. Please let me know in the comments if I'm not seeing this option. So we're just gonna add something more on page 2. Alright, so let make, let's make page 2, we're gonna split it into columns, we're gonna add a field and the field is going to be a file upload. The name of this field will be, can you upload a picture of yourself while you are in the air doing a 360 on the black beast? That would be awesome! We're gonna let them upload a JPEG, a PNG, a TIFF file. Ooh, TIFFs are really big. And a PDF, of course. Max upload file styles would be in bytes. Well, in bytes, that is ridiculous. But let's find out. Google is our best friend. Let's go to a online converter full of ads. And then we convert 2 megabytes to 20,000 bytes of 2 million bytes and a little bit more all right we're gonna save this page we're gonna add another field and it's gonna be a file upload we already did that we're gonna place a credit card number 
very good. And we're gonna add just below it a credit card expiration date and below that one a credit card CVZ. Just let's give them all a name. What is your credit card number? If we give them a name then the name would, would appear in this drop down. So this name is gonna be what is your expiration date. Well, not of the person itself, but of the card, of course. What is your credit card expiration date? And what is your CVC date? Now we can align the fields together. So those things are correctly set up. Let's add another field. The next field is gonna be a calculator. That's gonna be awesome. The name is total of per people coming to Austria and let's add a operator group and those are the fields that people can add their numbers in so we have two of those fields how many participants are there and how many supervisors are there mm, let's save this form and if you fill those out in page number one you will see here in page number two you will see those total of people let's add another one we're going to add a range slider with this field you can of course enter a range. The name is how tall are you? Default we're gonna make it 170. The minimum size will be 150 and maximum will be 200. And we're talking of course about centimeters. So the prefix and the suffix should be centimeter. As you can see it right there. And you can also enter a prefix when you're uh, dealing with money, for example. You can use it in all kinds of ways. Let's add another field. And this field is going to be a star rating, because we want to know... What do you... What did you think of this awesome form? Question mark. This one is required. Mm, the number of stars should be 10. Be a star, the star size, you can change it right here, make it smaller or bigger. The star spacing, you can change it all down there. The star color, of course, let's make it more yellow. All right, then we're going to add another field. Let's go to these. All right, I want to add another page, page three. And on page three, we're going to build a summary field. And the summary field will just sum up everything that someone has entered. So that's very useful if you have a multi-step form. Let's call it you. I have entered this information. All right, let's add another field just below the summary and it's gonna be a consent field. The name will be I consent with the privacy policy and you can enter here another more text of the agreement i accept that you will send me spam emails for every day for the next year i cannot unsubscribe and promise i will by occasionally occasion occasion whatever buy some products of you that's a great privacy policy a great consent field all right here you can also enter a linked text they can read the entire policy on your website so you should enter something like read more and then you can click it as you will see read the entire policy it's a nice linked text Right, we're gonna save this one and now we have all fields now let's the last one is we need to have a button so we're gonna add a button and the name is yes I would lose like to receive a quote for my next awesome Austria experience that is a submit button you can change the entire button if you like let's add a button on page one because we need to add a a different buttons so you can go to the next page so for the buttons we're gonna use a two column because I want to have two buttons on it the first button will be 
the next page. And the name will be continue. We're gonna place it right there. On page two, we also need, of course, a button. Let's make it two columns. We're gonna add two buttons. This button will say previous page. And let's call it previous or go back. And the next button, let's copy just this button and let's make this button say continue. Let's make it continue too so we don't clash with the other one. Right, let's add a, another button to the last page and that button will be the previous page so people can go back. Okay, now this button needs to go right there. And now we have a form with three different pages. Oh, we cannot save it because we need to enter the slug. We've used it before. So let's make it go back three. Page two is okay. All right, let's check the entire form if it works. The continue button, yes, we have to enter all the fields. So let's check out this field, just fill it in and as you can see the conditional logic works great. Let's go with 5 participants and 25 supervisors. I want to rent equipment, I want a bus and I'm getting really sick when I can't sit in front. And I like calls, mm, yes I love it, great, there we are at the right place. What is our Facebook address, HTTPS, Facebook.com slash W press doctor and we are coming the 13th of October on 2020 the 16th of October 2020 our question will be are there peanuts included in the trip press continue to go to the next page here is our beautiful next page so that works and even the go back button works and we can fill this in Upload a picture of yourself while you're in the air doing a 360. Sure, no problem at all. Awesome picture of the doctor, that's me. On a snowboard doing a 360 in the air on the Black Beast. What is my, how tall am I? Well, let's make it 188. What did you think of this awesome form? Five stars, of course. What is your credit card number? This field will only accept real credit card numbers as you will see. This is not a good number. So this field will actually check your credit card number with the real credit card database. And as you can see, once I enter a real credit card number, it sees immediately that this is from Visa or MasterCard. It's also the same with the expiration date. If this doesn't match the card, you will get a message that it's not okay. Also with the CVC number, then it will not be permitted. All right, now we can press continue. Now, as you can see in the summary, everything has been filled out the right way. The date and the URL are just on top. And I really don't like all these bullets down here, but we can of course style it later on with CSS. So we can press this button. Yes, I would like to receive a quote and let's see what happens when we push that button. We are being redirected. We are being redirected to our thank you page, that is awesome. So, if you want to see your entries, you can see them right there. You can see, hey, this is a submitted entry for my field. And you can also see all the fields that has been filled in. You, you can even watch the photos that have been sent in or the files being uploaded. So that's really awesome. It's really great, so now you know how Caldera Forms works and how you can create a crazy form with all the fields available in Caldera Forms. You can also integrate with MailChimp. And there is a lot more to discover when you buy the pro version of Caldera Forms. If you notice that your email is not being sent out right, you can add a WP SMTP plugin and it will show right here in this email system drop-down so you can use another system to send out your emails. We'll, I'll be making a tutorial in the near future. 
Well done! Now you know how to create these awesome forms. If you liked this video, hit that like button so I know we were on the right track. And if you want to know more about SEO, follow this video. And also, you need to make sure that your website is safe, so follow this tutorial about WordPress security. Have an awesome day, friends! I will see you with the next patient.